G'day guys and welcome back to one of my tutorials. Uh, today I wanted to do a special tutorial on uh, the black box flight recorder. It's um, something that I've been playing with uh, in the last few days and I thought oh, this is quite an interesting um, tutorial that might go out because I was actually having a little bit of difficulty in getting you know, some aspects of this up and running so I thought I'd do an end-to-end -end video on it. And um, this is also a, a great thank you for all of my subscribers. Um, I just hit a thousand subscribers, so woohoo for me. Um, I didn't think I'd ever get that many subscribers, but it looks like some of the videos that I'm doing uh, appeal to some of the guys, so that's great. And I think I'll, um, I've got some feedback on some bits and pieces that I, I should do going forward, so you might see some more coming up. But for the black box flight recorder that we're going to talk about today, I just want to have a big thank you to Vic the Nick Dude um, out of uh, New Zealand and uh, you know it's thanks to guys like these like Nick that um, write this stuff so that we can actually do some really cool stuff with um, you know tuning our quads or just even doing overlays like this within our videos to make them a bit more interesting so if you don't know what a black box does um, on our quads it will basically take um, a telemetry feed out of the NAS board, in this case uh, it'll be on a NAS Revision 5 board and um, output it to an external uh, repository that we're going to configure so that um, we can then take aftermarket or post-processing it uh, so that we can actually see um, what's actually happening with the quadcopter and use these to refine our PID values because we'll be able to see the P, I and D um, responses and make our videos really cool, you know, by, by just putting overlays. I mean, this is just a quick example here and um, what you can do is put like the quad attitude and you can put the stick positions, um, you can hide some of this PID uh, waveforms uh, so that we actually just get only the things that I just previously mentioned and um, you know it's it's just some really really cool software so a huge thanks to Nick and uh, any of the guys that have helped him along the way to, to get this working and uh, making it simple um, to configure and just have it working so let's get on with it and uh, I'll try to take you through A to Z of this and uh, hopefully it'll make some sense going forward uh, because it was a bit confusion for me so um, I'll take all the bits and pieces that I've learnt and hopefully highlight them to you so that you know you can uh, get through uh, getting this configured and up and running for your system. First point you should uh, go and hit is the RC Groups thread forum uh, which is the black box flight data recorder. Uh, Nick has highlighted a few things here uh, around the open log device and where the repository of the software is and uh, some of that uh, post-processing uh, software that you um, will use to understand what's going on with the quad if you're not using the inbuilt uh, facility within clean flight or base flight. Uh, the one thing that um, you need to go and buy is a open log, open log device. Now what is an open log device? Let's jump over to the page. Um, it's basically a, a, an Atmel chip, a 328P, that has uh, capability on the other side to take a micro SD uh, memory card on it. And they've written some software that needs to be flashed to this micro SD device, well, specifically to the Atmel 328P chip using a uh, USB programmer, so that um, the data that's coming from the NAS board. Uh, can this device can keep up with the flow and there's a few recommendations as well um, around the size it should be at least a class 10 memory device uh, and a probably of 16 gig capacity so if you're going out to buy your micro SDs make sure they're at least meet that minimum spec to buy the um, device itself the original one is hosted by SparkFun. You can buy it there, which is what I did. Uh, or you can buy some Chinese clones now that are on the market um, that seem to do 
as good a job as well. So it's up to you guys which one you buy, but I've gone with this one here um, to sort of put the money back into the people that did a bit of the original work and, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it's probably any better because the clones, you know, will probably use very much the same discrete components. And so what we'll need to do is, um, as I mentioned, uh, flash this so that the unit will be able to to uh, keep up with everything that's happening and it's um, you know, done through the USB programmer. So let's look at what's going on there. So to flash the device uh, that I just showed you, the OpenLog device, we're going to need a USB FTDDI device. Uh, this is an example that I've just done a Google search on. Uh, you can buy these off eBay, they vary in price from you know, a few bucks delivered to 20 bucks delivered. Um, now I just want to give you a word of warning. These chips on the cheap ones are clones out of China and I know that under Windows devices the drivers have been tampered with by uh, the original uh, FTDI manufacturer and as such you'll have to fiddle around with it and find an older uh, version of the driver to get this to actually work on Windows. Now I do all of my programming on a MacBook Pro so it's slightly different and it just works but I just want you to keep that in mind that if you go the cheap route you might have a little bit more work to find some older drivers so that this is recognized as a, with a COM port within Windows itself. So you've been warned. Um, so we'll have to grab one of these and we need to wire this so that it will connect into the OpenLog device itself and use this diagram here to connect the OpenLogger output pins to the USB FTDI input pins and I've color coded each one so that it's easier to see and it also relates to uh, this picture here which I took of my FTDI hooked up to the OpenLog device itself and uh, each of those colors are corresponding to the ones in the previous diagram that were shown. If you haven't already done it or you don't have Arduino already loaded onto your computer, um, just do Arduino download in uh, Google University and uh, you'll get this as a landing page. Just click on it and um, basically pick a version of Arduino, in this case it's 1.6.5 um, and I downloaded the Mac version but if you've got Windows of course pick the Windows and just install it. It's a matter of downloading it and just running through the normal procedure of um, extracting software. So the first thing we'll do is we'll scroll down a bit and this will link us off to the OpenLock black box firmware. So this is the firmware that we're going to use you know, via Arduino to push to the OpenLock device so that, uh, as I mentioned before, we can write to it um, much faster than we normally would so that we don't lose any of the important information being logged. Uh, so clicking on that, we get to the GitHub uh, software page for it. Um, and what we need to do, at the time of this video, the OpenLong version 3 black box is the latest version. And we'll need to go to over here where it says releases. Um, just to, to give you an idea, there's actually a little bit of a black box firmware download um, blurb here. Um, and one thing that I'm actually going to mention is the stuff that's written here. Um, it confused the crap out of me. So. Um, I'll come back to this section of it. Um, these are basically the library files that are downloaded as part of the firmware we're about to grab and I'll show you how you actually grab those libraries and copy them um, because it wasn't clear to me and it took me you know, a good 15 minutes to try to work out what they were talking about. So to grab the software we'll head over to the releases section version 2 but um, just understand that it's actually um, that version 3 that I mentioned before and uh, we'll click on the black box software and just go off and download it so in my case 
I'll download it here to my Arduino directory and uh, we'll let that download. So I've just gone to the file that we just downloaded previously which is the OpenLock black box version 2 zip. Uh, we'll extract that out and we get a directory presented to us. Uh, there's two aspects to this directory. Um, there's a little readme so please go ahead and um, read through that. It's um, got some useful information and uh, I'll just quickly show you uh, some of it. It's It just tells you um, how to install it but of course this video is going to do that. Uh, there's two folders. One is the OpenLog version 3 black box. As I said to you it is version 3 even though the other one said version 2. And what we have is the CCP hex and the INO. That's the um, file that you'll be selecting in Arduino to open up the sketch file. If we look at uh, this libs section here, there's two directories presented to us. Now if I go back to that previous page that had all the information on the libs, basically what this section is trying to say to you is that there are two folders, one is called SDFAT and the other one's called Serial Port. What we need to do is we need to take the contents out of those folders and stick them into the library. So, in short, what it's saying is, if you drill down, we have to copy everything that's in here and copy everything that's in here and we need to put it into our Arduino libraries file. So I've gone ahead and done that. This is where Arduino is on my system. It's under Arduinos. Here's the library and what I did was I copied every individual file and just put it into here. And um, that was the only way I was able to compile the sketch. So what I mean by that is if we now open up the Arduino, so I'll just flick over to Arduino and we'll open up that sketch file that I've been talking about. Um, the other thing that I did that you need to do is with Arduino um, you need to put the file, the OpenLong version 3, which is the hex and the ENO files, into the Arduino directory. The other thing that you need to make sure is that the name of this file matches exactly the name of the root folder. If it doesn't, it it won't work okay so just make sure that these two match and you'll be right and so what we'll do is we'll open up that inno file which happens to be this one here and we get the sketch uh, so in other words there's a whole heap of information here that's been written on what it does and this latest version basically allows auto boarding up to board rates of 115,200 board so um, when it's set to that, uh, there's basically no information that's lost. Uh, you don't need to do anything to the sketch file other than install it. But I just want to show you one thing. If we select on the verify button over here, the sketch will compile and you'll see the progress bar here. And every, if everything works correctly, this will compile properly. And we see that it has. Okay, so see here that there were no errors and it's done compiling. Cool, so if you're uh, still following up by now and uh, everything seems to be working, uh, the next thing we can do is we can look at actually flashing this software to that uh, open logger itself. So using that diagram that I previously showed you, have everything wired up just as it is in this picture here that of, of my system and what you'll find is that you'll have a, a red light on the USB program uh, the, that's the USB FTDI and you'll also have a flashing light on your open log system if it's wired correctly and we now need to tell this system about that FTDI device there's a couple of places that you need to look at and so if we look at the under tools there should be an Arduino board section so there's two 
types that seem to work here. Um, on some of the reading that I've come across, it seems like the bootloaders that have been placed on earlier versions of that um, uh, USB um, memory uh, device either had the genuine you know bootloader on it or it came with the older Arduino Pro or Pro Mini bootloader. Now we'll just select the Pro Mini so you'll see that the other thing the next thing that comes up is the processor. So you need to set the Atmega 328 5 volts 16 megahertz clock unit because that's what it is right on the open long device. So you can set that and you also need to set the port. Now this is a Linux based system so it comes up as a dev USB serial device in my case right. Um, on Windows devices you'll have a COM port associated with it and you can look under uh, devices and printers off your start menu to work out if the COM port on your unit is working correctly. The other thing, you have it as a selectable item here if the COM is also working correctly. Uh, but it's a, just a second way of trying to cross correlate what your device is. Now, depending on the bootloader that is on your OpenLog device, you'll either get a, an error or you'll get success. So I just want to show you both. Um, in my case, uh, the Arduino Pro will give me an error when I try to write to it, right? So they're the three things that we needed to set and all we have to do is now select the upload button. It'll rebuild the sketch file with those three parameters that we just placed. So that was the board type, the processor memory, speed and um, you know, and here we go. So we see that it's errored out. So it's telling you that it can't communicate with the device. Now, this does no harm, okay? So you can try both of these. If it fails in this situation, what you need to do is go back and ch change it to the genuine you know device. Make sure that the ports are still all correct, which it is. And what we can do is hit the upload again and it will recompile using the new build parameters and it will upload the software to the system. So it's now uploading because I can see all the lights are flashing. And it's done uploading. So we've been had a successful upload. Um, I just want to note one thing to you that um, I had a little problem there where it seemed like when I tried to upload it twice I would get an error so what I ended up doing was I just pulled the USB out restarted the open log uh, file upload in Arduino so oh, sorry I just redid Arduino again and um, it works every time when you do that so in case you come up with a little error like that um, and what I mean is I'll just show you now so technically if we hit upload again it should work without an issue. However, I, I noticed that the transmit and receive lights are not working as normal and here we go, I'm getting actually a little error here. So one of the things that I've gone ahead and done, as I said, was I just shut down the application, I pull out the USB, reset everything, put the USB back in, kick off the iNo file again, all the parameters are as they were before and we'll just hit upload so it compiles the sketch again and uh, it should go into an upload situation here we go it's uploading and I can see both the transmit and receive lights working again so that's just something that I found um, I'm not sure if it's an issue with the version of Arduino on the Mac um, but you might find something like this also on Windows so if you do uh, you've seen it before, you know, a little quick fix about it.